What's up guys and welcome back to a brand new HMSP news video. Today we're going to be talking about Ikel Quona. Uh, his journey to MotoGP, definitely a curious uh, little journey to MotoGP, a little bit different to other riders you could say, similar to like Prochucci for example, um, where they just had a little bit of a different sort of journey up to the Premier Class, the main dream uh, obviously of any rider. And Ike Laquona uh, actually never entered Moto3 in uh, in the in the World Championships that uh, are available uh, in the world. He actually went straight over into Moto2, uh, which was very interesting. But um, prior to the official uh, MotoGP World Championship, he was in the CEV, uh, which is obviously the Spanish uh, Championship uh, in Moto2 uh, in 2015 and 2016. Uh, he didn't do too well in 2015 in that uh, World Championship, but 2016 uh, was definitely a, a little bit better. Obviously, at this age, he would have been quite young. Uh, I do believe uh, he would have been around 17, maybe, or 16, possibly, around that age. Um, maybe. I'm not actually too sure what the age is like in CV. Uh, the minimum, if there is a minimum age or anything like that, but obviously he's 19 at the moment, he's in MotoGP in 2016 and 15 and that, you know, that's quite a, quite a couple years ago, so um, he was obviously quite young, and uh, in that 2016 World Championship over in the CV, he finished 6th place, um, which isn't too bad, and that is when he made the jump into the official World Championship uh, in 2016 as a replacement rider for Dominique Agata, who obviously uh, got injured or something happened, uh, I would assume injury. Uh, can't quite remember, you know, these little tiny details from years ago. But um, he did go into that, uh, the car expert into Wetton uh, racing team uh, for that 2016 season to replace Agata. Done six races uh, and didn't uh, get obviously points or wins or poles or anything at all really. Um, so it wasn't uh, that great. Obviously, it would have been quite hard to, uh, you know, adapt over into Moto2. Obviously, the level of competition is a little bit higher than the CEV. Uh, that is obvious because these are the best riders in the world, whereas the CEV riders are usually mostly Spanish talent. Um, but um, yeah, uh, then he went to uh, Moto2 once again in 2017 uh, on board the Garage uh, Plus into Wet and Team. Uh, teammate Sajesco Raffin, and uh, this is when he started to get his first couple points in Moto2. Only two points in the in the 13 races that he did perform, but um, it was steady progress, you could say, uh, from uh, Ike Lacona. Finishing 35th in the championship, and then obviously this is when he started to make step forwards in his career uh, last year and this season. Uh, obviously last year with the Swiss in Innovative uh, Investors, uh, he, he completed the whole season and uh, picked up his first podium in the class and uh, finished 12th in the World Championship standings, uh, just like this year. Um, 2019, you know, uh, he's completed the whole season, got one podium, uh, got 10 more points than last year. So it's almost like an identical championship um, and also finished P12 in, in that World Championship. Now, a lot of people would see these statistics uh, and these results in his career, there isn't really too much to look at because his career has just, it's been so quick, you know, because he's not done Moto3 or anything and he's just gone uh, straight into Moto2 and then straight into MotoGP. I mean, it, it's one of those like curious um, kind of trajectories where you look at him and think, you know, how on earth has he got there uh, in, in MotoGP? And um, he's actually not even doing too bad in MotoGP. Obviously, he's going to be riding uh, the Red Bull KTM uh, Tech 3 bike alongside Miguel Oliveira. He has already done a race uh, on that bike, obviously when he replaced the injured Portuguese rider in Valencia, but he will be doing his full debut next season on a one-year contract uh, with that team. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how it goes for him, how um, how he adapts over to MotoGP. It seems to be going pretty well so far. He needs to improve, obviously, in loads of areas, but that you know that's obvious. He's, he's a rookie going into MotoGP, um, but um, it definitely doesn't look too bad for him. I, I, I do think he could be one to look out for. I don't think he's going to do you know a Fabio Quartararo and come in and and get podiums and all that. But um, I definitely feel like he's going to be a rider to watch out for. You know, in the lower end of the points, trying to creep into the top ten maybe. 
Uh, I think that could be very interesting. But um, yeah, Ike Lacrona in the professional Moto, you know, like the MotoGP kind of championships, um, the professional uh, Moto Cycling uh, Racing, as they call it over here in Spain. Um, he's actually, you know, he's, he's done 53, uh, 56 races, sorry, with only two podiums uh, in all of those races. So, um, yeah, very interesting career journey. Uh, prior to Moto2, I do believe he was doing some other funky racing, Motorrad, uh, I think it was, or something along those lines, but uh, not too many details on that. But uh, yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe for more content as always. And make sure you leave it down in the comments. How do you think Ike Lacona is going to do in MotoGP? The young 19-year-old, obviously, once the season does come about, he will be 20 years old because his birthday is on the 6th of January. So um, not too long for, for this, this man to become, uh, well, a, a man and leave the teenage years. So, uh, yeah, guys, uh, make sure you leave it down in the comments. What do you think he's going to do next season? And, uh, yeah, leave a like and subscribe for more content as always. And I'll see you with some brand new videos very soon.